Hello everybody and welcome. Now it's been about six or seven months since I gave you an update on the Waterbox LPS tank I started. So today I'm gonna to bring you up to speed, including telling you how I'm having success with Garnier Poro Corals and Bernard Poro Corals, as well as an update on how I'm getting on with Calquasa on this tank. And of course, no Reef Dork tank update would be complete without a light change. So I'll tell you what I've done with that too. There's loads more to come too. So strap yourself in, get yourself a cup of tea, and let's get stuck in. All right, so here we are, and we're gonna kick things off with a fish report. So I don't have a great many fish in here. The first one I wanna tell you about is a pipe fish. Now I did have two blue stripe pipe fish in here. One of them died recently though. They really don't like flow. They're just not very good swimmers at all. So they can't cope with any flow. And what I found was I got back, I stepped away out of the office for about half an hour. I came back and he was stuck to the back of my powerhead, my AI Nero 5. That's a common complaint. They're known for mulching fish. So, and I didn't have the fish guard on the back, so I really need to put that on. Um, he was still alive, but uh, his partner kept his, his mate. They're a breeding pair, or mated pair anyway. And the other one kept attacking him. No idea why. Um, I don't know if he just thought he was too weak, but I rescued him, put him in the sump. As far as I'm aware, he's still there, but he wasn't in a very good condition, so he might well have passed. The other fish I've got in here are my one spot fox face, who's doing really well. This guy will, without doubt, at some point outgrow the tank, but for now, he's doing all right, actually. He's not as fat as I'd like, but he's not skinny. You can't see the bones down his side. So he does do all right, and he does a sterling job on the algae. And just around here, we have his algae mate, the Tommy Tang. Now, both of these guys will for sure outgrow the tank at some point, but for now, they're doing really well. And I've had them, oh, six months at least, maybe even a bit longer, and they're not showing signs of outgrowing the tank as yet. So doing all right. The other fish in there are Bangai Cardinals. I have a pair of Bangai Cardinals who always hide in the rock work. Let me see if I can find them. We can just about see them in there. So there is a pair, and these are a proper breeding pair. So these guys breed every month, pretty much without fail, and I regularly see um, fat mouth full of babies with one of them and unfortunately I've never managed to grow them to the point that uh, they're big enough to uh, well they basically they don't survive past day one <laughs> come down the morning after I've seen them uh, nice and plump and they are they have disappeared so I think they all get eaten the times when I've seen that work in the past is when they've escaped some of the babies have escaped to the sump so I'm hoping that might happen one day but for now, uh, that's basically fish food. Sorry guys, I know we all shouldn't eat babies, but sometimes they are just too delicious. Now let's move on though to the main reason that we're here, or the thing that I mentioned at the, in the start, which is gonies. I've never been able to keep gonies in the past, but that has all changed since I've been keeping this tank. And as a general rule, all of my gonies, or at least most of them, are doing really well, very well indeed, in fact. Uh, and the only, there are two things that I've done differently uh, since I've started having success with gunnies that I wasn't before. One of which is manganese. So I dose, I think on this tank, it's two milliliters per day of manganese, one milliliter in the morning, one in the evening. And the other thing I've done is calquasa. So the last time I tried uh, gunnies, I didn't, I wasn't using calquasa and I suspect the pH increased has something to do with that as well. And I do dose Calquasa on this tank as well. With that being said, I've probably got, I don't know, 10 uh, of the uh, the of the gunnies in here that are generally doing pretty well, but they are not all doing fantastic. This one was getting stung by its neighbor. So I think we can forgive that one, but there are a couple more. This tiny little Bernard here is sulking. That almost died, but it has come back and it's actually kind of looking all right now. There's another one at the back there that I'll get some top-down footage of. That almost completely died, but again, it has clung on. Now those didn't do well when I had lower magnesium. So my magnesium got down to something like 1200, no, below 1200, it was 11 something. It's now back and better, but they all sulked. And as a result, uh, they just kind of, I don't know, they're not dead and they've actually seem to have recovered reasonably well, but uh, they did not enjoy the low magnesium. But ultimately, I'm not doing anything special with the gunnies, just Calquasa, 
maintaining proper levels roughly of the main parameters and also dosing a bit of manganese. Away from gunnies then, and like I say, this would not be a proper reef dock update if I wasn't talking about a lighting change. So I recently decided I wanted more light. So what I found with this, this scape, I love the scape, but because it's quite tall, wide at the top, and then doesn't really go out very far further down, I found the single point of light didn't meant that you didn't get great spread and that actually you got shading basically around the sides. So I couldn't see a lot of my corals down here. They weren't getting light and they were just looking a bit sad and deprived of light, a bit sort of brownish. So the original plan was just to get a bit more light. So I got two of these. These are the AI Blade Grows, the white colored uh, lights. Got these to go either side, but I decided whilst I was at it, it would be an opportunity to get some Kessel Shimmer back in my life. So I bought an A360X. It's absolutely fantastic and it just, that shimmer. Some people don't like Kessel Shimmer, but man, I absolutely love it. And this is my favorite lighting combination I've had so far. Uh, it's really, really good. The blades make the cars look fantastic, as do the Kessels, but the blades give that extra pop that the Kessels aren't able to do. The other thing I should mention whilst I'm up here is the Tunzi cooling fan. This did do the job in the British summer here. It didn't really get that hot this summer, but it kept the temperature nice and cool. It only peaked, the temperature only peaked by about one degree centigrade higher than normal, so it did keep it nice and cool. Whereas my other tank in my room, which didn't have, this is a bit of a mess at the moment, but this tank didn't have any cooling on it for a while. That was a good two or three degrees warmer than this tank with the Tunzi fan. So it does do a good job. Although it was a hundred quid, so it is rather expensive. That's everything up here though. So now let's move down into the sump. All right, so now here we are in the sump and filtration wise, I have a refractory Smart Roller S. That keeps the water really clean, really polishes it. And I've noticed a significant improvement. Well, not an improvement. The water always used to be dirty and yellow. It is no longer dirty and yellow. So that does a fantastic job of water clarity. And I changed the roll for the first time recently on this. It was really easy and actually easier even than the Red Sea one, which was my previous favorite. Uh, and this is now probably even easier to change than that. Apart from that, I have this enormous refugium full of Kato. It's absolutely packed and it seems to be doing a reasonable job. I don't want to have a skimmer anymore because it. I found I had a Deltic 400i, but it just, whilst it started really well, pulling out a load of thick crap, it got to the point where it just wasn't effective. And I couldn't tune it to get it right, so it was pulling out skimmate, and it just had like this tiny little bit of skimmate that I hardly ever had to change, so it wasn't doing a job and I needed to change. There is also a phosphate reactor at the back. I have that running overnight, but I'm not changing it regularly enough for it to be properly effective, which is down to laziness. Now I did think when I put the, uh, the refugium in that it might start eating up all of the trace elements that are important for my corals. So I bought myself some Brightwell Kato Grow, but as it turns out so far, and I've had that refugium going for a fair while now, a couple of months, hasn't done any, uh, any damage. Seems to be doing really well. My corals look absolutely fine and it hasn't absorbed all of my uh, trace elements. I am interested to see how this stuff goes. People talk about it and say it's very good, but at the moment, I don't seem to be needing it. My algae is growing very quickly indeed. The tank is free of, uh, of, of nuisance algae and the corals look fine, so I don't think I need to change it. The other thing I should tell you about is Calcwasser. That is the Ecotech Versa that I'm using to dose the Calcwasser, uh, but in order to tell you a bit more about the stuff, let me go back up to the tank. All right, Calcrasser update then. So Calcrasser is doing a really good job on this tank and the corals look absolutely fantastic. My numbers aren't quite as nice as I would like and the trouble with Calcrasser is that you can't adjust calcium alkalinity and magnesium individually. So my magnesium, well, it doesn't, in fact, it doesn't dose magnesium at all. So my magnesium is a bit lower than I would like at the moment and same is true for my calcium. To be fair, the corals look absolutely fine, so I don't really think that's a problem, but I would like them to be higher, and if I was dosing two part, I would be able to adjust those levels. So I'm tempted to switch to Reefs Elements pH+, Plus, which does a similar job to Calcwasser in theory in terms of uh, increasing my uh, pH, but I just love the fact that Calcwasser is doing well, and I'm a little bit reluctant to start uh, chasing numbers when everything is going well. Uh, the alternative, of course, is that I could just get a dosing pump for 
calcium and a dosing pump for magnesium, which I have lying down there somewhere. And then I could adjust them uh, separately if I need to on top of the Calcrusser. And I think that's probably the way to go. I just really like Calcrusser. It does the job. My tank is looking fantastic. Uh, the Calcrusser is very simple as well. So I think I will probably stick with it, but I am contemplating the change. The other thing I do on this tank is 25% water changes. Now, I used to do 10% water changes once a week, but instead I've switched more recently to try to do much bigger water changes. The tank looks noticeably better after a water change. 25% is uh, no mean, no small amount, so that's probably why. And I would like to get into the habit of doing that every week, although at the moment it probably works out at more like, I don't know, once a fortnight I do a 25% water change. So it works out roughly 12.5% a week, something like that. But the water changes do a good job. And with high volume water changes like that, 25%, it probably does do something to bump up my calcium and magnesium. And like I say, the tank always looks really good after I've done a change. So that seems to be working well. Now there was one last thing I wanted to tell you about, and that is the bare bottomness of this tank. So I decided to go without sand on this one for the first time, and I generally have no problem with it, but what I do find is that it makes the tank look a little bit bare, kind of, because you've just got this black patch at the bottom where you normally have sand that looks nice and reflecting light back up. So what I'm trying to do is cover the bottom layer of the tank in corals. I'm using these 3D printed um, coral stands to either mount Zoas on, like I've done here, or to put Scullies on. And I've got a bubble coral around here as well. So I'm trying to brighten it up a little bit just to make it look a little bit less drab. And the idea is that in a couple of months time, the, the bottom of the tank will be more or less completely covered in corals. So the tank will look much better. But that is probably everything I need to tell you about the tank at the moment. If you've got any questions, of course, put them down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next time. And until then, happy reefing.